Hey guys, so there was a question over in the uh, Inner Circle Circle community um, and what the author was wanting to know is how to change colours uh, in parts of a post or a post single um, based on the category that that post is in. Uh, using some colour categories probably would be the smart way to do that. Now. What I'm going to do here is show you how to do this using uh, WP Codebox, Metabox, you can use ACF or whatever you like, um, and we're going to use Bricks Builder to, to show you how this works. There is some PHP involved, which is probably the more complex part of it, so I'm going to leave that to the end to explain how that works. Uh, but fundamentally, what we end up with is I've got some Faker Press posts here and we can see our first one here is uncategorized if I view that um, I can see my bricks yellow in the background and my bricks dark text uh, for the heading uh, if I look at this next one that says red and white and view that it's got a red background with white text and I'll just show you one more the blue background with yellow text I got blue with the yellow and what I'm going to do is show you how this works um, and how easy it is to implement this into your own designs. Now, the first thing we have to do is look at these categories. Um, so if we look at the categories for our post, we can see we've got two extra fields on here for that we wouldn't normally have, which is our category color primary and our category color secondary. If we look at our blue yellow, we can see we've chosen a blue color and then a uh, yellow color. If I change this blue to a different kind of blue, so it's sort of like that dark blue like that, update that, and then come back to my posts and have a look at my blue yellow now, it has the updated colors, right? So pretty cool, right? Now, what we need to do is work out, firstly, how do we get these meta fields here, who are the color pickers, and then how do we use those in bricks? So let's start with the meta fields. So if we go back to, we're using Metabox custom fields, and I've created a set called category meta. We have a look in there. And I've got two fields in here. It's a little bit slow. This is running off WP local. I find that it's actually slower than running it off my live server for some reason, but that's another story. So category color primary. Could have picked an easier set of words to say, but a bit of a tongue twister. So category, color, primary. And that gives us this idea of uh, lowercase category, underscore, color, underscore, primary. And we're going to use that later in PHP. So I'll show you that later. So basically, it is a color picker. Uh, and then we've also got a secondary, which is a color picker. And just with the secondary as the last bit of that name. And for our settings, we want to set our location to taxonomy. And we want to set this on our category so it appears under our post categories. And that's all we have to do to add two color pickers with their own unique IDs to our category. So that there gives us this here. All right, simple, right? Now, now we've defined those. All we have to do is go into our categories. And let's say we create a, a new category uh, here. We want to create a new category. We'll pick a color and let's maybe go yellow background. Uh, not, not that yellow. Let's make it a, I don't know, what's that, brown? Make it a brown with, what are we going to stick on top of that brown? Maybe we'll use a yellow. Okay, so we're going to call this one brown yellow. Let's add that category. So we've got a brown yellow category now. So if I go to my post, just refresh this page, I'm going to grab this last uncategorized, uh, do a quick edit, and I'm going to stick it into my br uh, brown yellow category. Now if I look at this post here, if I view that, I've got a brown background with yellow text. Simple as that, right? Once it's all set up, it's very, very simple to manage. Okay, so let's look at how we actually apply those variables in Bricks. So let's go back to that one I was just looking at. And I want to look at the page source for this. And I'm going to look for 
Oops. There you go. There you go. Category. Looking at this bit of code here, I'll give it an idea of cat colors uh, in my code, which we'll get to later. So we end up with this block here being output from our PHP. And what we end up with is a style on the root. This is in the header um, on the root of the document with a variable called category color primary. So it's a modifier for primary, so two dashes. And there's our color. And then we've got category color secondary, and there's our color. So in Bricks, all we have to do is reference these variables to get those color values. So let's have a look at the actual uh, templates. Are we here? My templates. So I've got a post single template, uh, which is applied to all posts. I'm going to edit that with Bricks. Okay, there's my template. So if I look at my section here, I've actually given it a, a category wrapper as a class name and on the style for that and about background color and selecting raw for your color, the category color dash dash primary, which is what we saw in the uh, in the uh, code for that. Where are we going here? Yeah. So that category color primary for that. And on this heading here, I've given that a BEM element name of category dash wrapper underscore underscore heading. So it's our heading for our category wrapper. Okay, and in there, if we have a look at the style for the topography, I've set the color to raw, and that's our category color dash dash secondary. And that's just how it works. So if you want the secondary color anywhere, you use that variable. You want the primary color anywhere, you use the primary variable. Pretty simple, right? Now, another little tricky part here. So that, that's pretty much it, how you use it. Um, actually, just looking at the button, for example, on the button here, I've just told this at the ID. Uh, we set our topography for our color for the button to be our secondary color. And for the background, we've set that to be our primary color. There we go. So you're going to use it anywhere you like um, because the CSS variable is on the root of the document. All right. Now that is the basics of how it works. Now let's head back to the next part, which is the actual PHP that you need. Now having a look in here, where's my WP code box gone? There it is. So I'm using WP code box for this. You could use whatever you like, scripts organizer, uh, whatever you like. Doesn't matter. It can be in a child theme, in your functions.php, doesn't matter. All right. So I'm going to go backwards a little bit here. So what I'm using is a action for WP head. So this is a WordPress hook when the head part of your DOM is being output. Um, I'm going to call my set category color function. Okay. And what you can see here at the bottom of this, that is the style block we saw echoed out in the, uh, when we looked at the code for that um, post. Um, and it's basically got our ID here root element category color primary is going to be this variable and category color secondary is going to be that variable and that's going to echo that out into the head all right so we only want this to happen once right now one of the problems with wordpress hooks is sometimes they get called more than once so you might have a um, theme which calls this wp head then you might have a plugin which does the same thing and what I found with just bricks and what I've got currently installed, this was actually being called twice. So we only want this output once. We need to do a little bit tricky stuff at the top of this function. At the top of this function, what I'm doing is creating a static variable. Now, static variable in PHP is static. It doesn't matter how many times you call this function, that variable gets defined once, and whatever it was the last time it was set is what it will be the next time you call that same function. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we're doing is setting a static variable for done. If we've already done, then just return. We don't want to run the rest of this code if it's already been done. Then if it's not done, we're going to set done to true uh, and then continue with the code. The next time it calls this function, done's already set, so it just returns. So that there, those three lines there, ensures that this function will only run once. All right. We then want to get the categories. So what categories are applied to the current post ID. So when you're looking at this post here, that post has a post ID in WordPress. Um, and 
what I found is that we had a problem. I'll show you this when we come back to this template here. So at the moment, see I'm seeing the blue. And the reason for that is because I'm selecting my populate content to preview this as that uh, Possumus Maxime post. If I change that to this post here, which is the, what's it? Uh, Ut Animi. I'm terrible with Latin, so forgive me on that. So if I change that to U-T-A-N, there it is. If I change it to that, apply and preview. I've now got my brown background with the yellow, which is this post here. So in Bricks, when you're creating templates, you can set a populate content, and that's the post that's going to use or the page it's going to use to populate the content here. All right now, what I found in when I was doing this is that with the way Bricks works, when you're in the editor. The current post ID is the ID for the template that you're looking at, that you're working on, not for the preview post that you're actually using to populate the content. So what happens is that if you call get the category without any ID, it doesn't work in, in your um, preview. In your When you're editing your template, the preview item doesn't work properly. So what I've done here, it's a little bit of trickiness. What we're doing is if they get categories and there are no categories okay so we haven't got anything set on that um maybe there is a preview id so we're going to use this bricks helper function to get the template preview post id based on the current templates id so this is going to look at uh, the id of this template for our post single so what is the id of that it's going to put that into this function for bricks and it's going to get the template preview post ID, which is what we set through here. So hopefully that makes sense. So this is out this post in the editor at the moment is the actual template. This post is the preview post and we want the ID for that. So we're getting that ID. If that exists, we're going to get the categories for that post. So we want the categories for the preview post. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. A bit, a bit tricky, but uh, that, that makes it work in the editor. All right, we're going to set some defaults here. There's a couple of ways you can do this. I've just set defaults for my initial variables. And I'm just using the Bricks color primary, which is that uh, yellow, and the Bricks text dark, which is a almost black color. Um, I'm using those as my defaults. Uh, you can make these blank, and you can use a CSS variable with a failover to a default if you want. I'm not going to go into that. So that's a feature of CSS variables. Um, or if you're using something like ACSS or a core framework or whatever you're using, uh, you can set the defaults based on whatever variables from those frameworks there. What we're then going to do is because this here, let's have a look at our um, post here. So for example, this red and white here. If we look at that, that might be red and white. It might be uncategorized. It might be in a different category for products or or whatever it is, um, it might have more than one category. Okay, so if it's got more than one category, what we want to do is we want to step through each of the categories that it has. We're going to use an array walk function, which is a PHP function. So we're going to walk through the categories. We're going to use an anonymous function here, so we're going to have to define another function, which then gets the item, which is the actual current uh, item from the array that it's walking through. And the key is the actual index. So uh, is that, is that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, this is the actual category uh, that we've selected. I'll come back to this, explaining this a little bit soon, because this is a little bit tricky if you're not used to it. Um, so what we're going to do is then for, to find the primary, we're going to look for get to meta. So if that category we're looking at has a meta field called category color primary, then we're going to get the value of that and assign it back to this variable up here. And the reason we do that is because not all categories are going to have these fields applied to it. Okay, so if we just create an uncategorized category and we don't have any of these applied to it, um, then it's not going to have those applied to it. 
But if we apply more than one of these categories to it, the last category is the one that's going to be the value that we're going to get from that. Okay, so it's going to step through those. It's going to get our primary. It's going to get our secondary if they exist. And then it's going to set our variables up here based on that. Now, I said I'd explain this bit here. With PHP, this, is, this traps a lot of people. So if I don't have this block here, if I take that use out, if I don't have that there, a lot of people would think that this, this variable here and that variable there are the same. They are not. When you create a anonymous function in PHP, the scope within the curly braces is completely independent of its parent scope. So this variable is inside the scope is a, is a different variable to the one that's outside of that, that scope there. So to put a copy of that into the scope, we have to use this use keyword on our function. Now, I'm going to just take these ands out there to explain a little bit more about that. If we don't use the and symbol, what this use does is it takes a copy of that variable and it sticks it inside the scope. So when we change the variable in here, it still does not change the variable outside of that scope. We have the value that we set up here, which we can use inside the scope. So we've got a copy of it. But when we change it, it does not change where it came from. So by adding a little and in front of it, what that's telling PHP to do is pass that variable by reference. So it's not passing a copy of that variable. It's passing a reference to that variable. So now when we change this variable in that scope, it changes the variable in that scope. So by setting color primary to this variable, it's going to change that. A lot to discuss there, but that's pretty much how it works. And then all we're going to do is echo out to the uh, DOM, a style element with a CSS rule sending our root category primary to whatever that current variable happens to be. So it will either be the default we set up here, or if the category, that a category that's assigned to this post has a meta field with category color primary, category color secondary, then that will populate with those values. So that's pretty much how the PHP works. It's a little bit complex, but it works. Uh, I will link to the, the, this um, code uh, on a GitHub, um, so you can use that if you want to as a, as a kickstart. The key thing is that when you do this, these, these need to match up. So let's go back to our meta box. So these names you've given to the, uh, or the IDs, I should say, you've given to these color pickers has to be the same as what you were using in this PHP code and that'll work for you. So hopefully that's been useful and is something that you can use in your designs. If you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thank you for listening.